of, um, of, of a three-week series on financial abundance. But I want to start by sharing with you that true prosperity is not about money, even though that's what we're going to talk about. That true prosperity is the consciousness that of the abundance that lies back of everything that has been made manifest, right? That's true prosperity is that consciousness. And the peace of mind and body that come with that consciousness, no matter what is showing up in the manifest realm. So examples are the consciousness of life and wholeness in our bodies, even if maybe something other than that life and wholeness is showing up. The consciousness that says, I am, I am grounded and I am rooted in the very life that God is. God is my source. That consciousness is true prosperity. The consciousness of loving relationships, um, even if maybe we haven't had though a, a lot of loving relationships in our lives lately, um, it's the consciousness that says, I am worthy. I am worthy of, of loving, kind, compassionate relationships in my life. That is true prosperity. And then the consciousness of more than enough, the consciousness of and what we worked on last week, money is good. Making friends with the word money, changing our consciousness from money being something that immediately brings up lack or a pit in our stomach or whatever to money is good and there is always more than enough. Um, that consciousness is true prosperity consciousness. Um, so there's a true peace, and you've heard the scripture that's the peace that passes all understanding. Have you ever had that experience where you're in the midst of maybe chaos going all around you, but you're in this place of peace, and it's almost odd, and you're observing the fact that you're not understanding why you're in this place of peace? But when we have this consciousness that truly that God is my source, that... <laughs> that none of my good can ever be withheld from me, then that, that peace that passes all understanding is, is, a, is alive for us. It's how, we, it's how we end up moving through our lives. So my good cannot be withheld in any area of my life. Let's say this together. My good cannot be withheld in any area of my life. Now, do you believe that? I mean, my good really cannot be withheld, and we're, good, of course, going to um, talk more about that. Okay, it feels so good to trust and know that your good will always, it will always come to you. No, that is true prosperity. No matter what is happening, no matter what is showing up, nothing can withhold my good. So the scripture today, you know, to him who has, more will be given and he will have an abundance. And the rest of that scripture is, and to him who doesn't have, even what he has will be taken away. And that seems like, what? <laughs> but it's really about consciousness. To him who has a consciousness of abundance, more will be given. And to those who have a consciousness of lack, guess what the experience is going to be? Yes, so this is all about shifting our consciousness. You know, last week I shared that we live in a participatory universe, meaning that we have an incredible amount of influence on the direction and the experience of our lives based on our consciousness. Like, this is exciting stuff. We're, we are participating in the evolution of our life. It's exciting and it's a huge responsibility, right? I mean, it's not, it's something that I want to just be like, wake up, wake up, wake up. Because we have to wake up if we want a different experience. It's time for us to change our consciousness about whatever it is that we're wanting to have a different experience with. And to, and to stick with that, to stick with that um, change of consciousness. And we're going to talk more about consciousness and how it relates to financial abundance today. Um, the reality is is that we live in a culture in which we barter basically with money, right? I mean, we all use money, yes. And anybody, you know, we talked last week, anybody ever worry about money? I'm not asking you to raise your hand. Um, you know, do we ever fret about money? Uh, do we have the consciousness that there's always going to be, you know, more than enough? Um, money is really important in our lives, and I think we do a disservice when we don't talk about it. It's so important for us to talk about it because it affects every single one of us. Yes. Do we want to have more than enough money flowing into and through our lives? Like, can we say yes to that? Yeah. Like, 
Who doesn't want that? Who doesn't want to have more than enough, you know, to do the things that you want to do, to give what you want to give when you want to give it, to have the things that you want to have, whatever it is, to, to have a roof over your head, to have more, you know, food to eat, to have clothes, to have, you know, everything that goes with that. But wouldn't it be so cool to just have such a flow that when a need came up, you just were able to give to that need and to make a difference? I mean, does anybody not want that? I wanted that freedom of flow. That sounds amazing to me. Charles Fillmore, our co-founder, actually said that living in poverty is a sin. Now, let's talk about what sin means in unity. It comes from the archery term, which simply means missing the mark. And so what he was saying is that if we are living in a lack consciousness and a lack experience, we're simply missing the mark with our consciousness. We aren't, we aren't on the bullseye of recognizing our source and knowing that we are worthy and that our good can never be withheld from us. Um, and as someone, and I'm going to say from my perspective today, who lived for years and years in great lack consciousness um, and experience, and see if any of you recognize any of these things, getting behind on bills, having creditors call. I even had, we had just moved into this townhouse and I even had a creditor call my neighbor who I didn't know and this neighbor comes over one day and I'm already devastated by everything that's going on and she just is like uh, somebody's calling for you and it was a creditor <laughs> like <"Wah!" laughs> um, and um, bankruptcy Worrying about paying the rent, having enough money for gas, having enough money for food. Um, I lived that experience. And um, I am so grateful, as I said last week, that in my early 30s, I found unity and I found these truth teachings because they have literally changed my life for the better and they have definitely changed my financial life. Um, in expected, but also in very unexpected ways, as recently as just this past week. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share about that in, in a few minutes. Um, and as I said, it didn't happen overnight. You know, I I'm, was, you know, I think 31 when I got here. I'm 37 now. Um, <laughs> plus 30 almost, but... <laughs> <laughs> but it didn't, it didn't happen overnight. And I love, because, you know, I love to use nature as a teacher, but Jesus loved to use nature as a teacher. And I loved how in Mark 24, 28, he said, For the earth bringeth forth fruit out of herself, first the blade, then the ear, and after the full and after the full corn in the ear. So it's like there's a process, and, and we're patient with the process. We, we keep doing what is ours to do to nurture the seed consciousness, and we have the patience to allow, um, to allow for it to happen. And here's the thing I'm going to tell you, it will happen. You just got to keep on, keep on keeping on. Um, it, your job is to keep your eyes and your consciousness on what it is that you are desiring to experience. That's really easy to do, isn't it? <laughs> Especially when they're in the midst of something opposite. Oh, I'm going to keep my eyes over here on what I want, even though this is wah, wah. You know, it, it takes effort. It definitely takes effort. But it's so, 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 so worth it. Um, and I'm going to tell you this, I would have never guessed the ways that my good has come to me. I mean, and that's the beauty of it, and that's why God is is God is my source is the first place we go every time because this realm of infinite possibilities and potentialities are beyond your human mind it's beyond any experience you've ever had it's beyond anything that you can imagine or think at the ways that it can come to you and I'm going to share about that in just a minute. So, um, and, and here's the thing, too. I, I know that these principles have been proven over and over again in my life. And I know that most of you out there have proven these principles over and over in your life. Yes? And I'm just sure that there are those of you out there today who would be willing to talk about that with people who may be new to unity, with people who may be struggling themselves in some area of their life right now. So I'm going to put you on the spot. If anybody, and not that you have to just get up and go do this, but if anybody would be willing to share about what these principles have done in their lives with somebody else, could you just raise your hand and... 
I'm thinking you, Dwayne, and Paul. I'm going to start pointing you guys out. Yeah, raise your hand for just a moment. So pe- look at it. This is great. The people around you, if you need to talk to somebody, go to these people who have had these experiences. Um, because I'm telling you, these principles work if you work them. They work if you work them. It's, it's amazing. Okay, so five basic principles of unity. They are... God is, I am, I ask, I pray, I act. The first principle, God is, God is my source. We talked about this last week. And we use this little tiny sentence in four ways. God is my source. God is my source. God is my source. God is my source. And it's something different with each time that you say that. And then, let's say this one, my consciousness of God as my supply is my supply. Um, So that's God is, and um, that is God is. Next one is I am. (laughs) We can say this together. I am not all that God is, but all that I am is God because I have come forth from this one presence and power. So all that I am is, is this. That's why when we talk about the kingdom is within you, it cannot be anywhere else because you have come forth from it. And then I am. And let's say this together. I am worthy. And next one. I am inherently worthy of the good I seek. This is a big one for us because we don't always recognize our worthiness. Our worthiness to live the life that is trying to be lived through us. Whatever that is in whatever way that is. To live the dream that you may have in your heart and your soul. And you know what? Your dream may simply be that um, I just want to have enough money to be happy for the rest of my life. Planting my garden and, and reading books or doing whatever. But knowing that you're worthy of whatever that deeper dream is inside of you. Um, so I, I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about uh, the story of the prodigal son, and we're going to look at this in a couple ways today and how it relates to worthiness. So the story of the prodigal son is that it's a parable. Jesus tells it. There's this father. This father evidently had some money, and um, so he had two sons, and his youngest son came to him and said, hey, dad, I'd really like to have my part of the estate now. And the dad said, okay, you know, gave him, gave him part of his what his inheritance was going to be. So a little while later, this young son decided that he wanted to go out and he wanted to to see what the world was about. So he took all of his inheritance and he went out into the world. And essentially, it's it's saying that he lived um, um, lavishly, (laughs) that he squandered his inheritance and uh, recognized and realized one day he didn't have any money left. And the thing is, is that the whole country was in a famine at that time. And so he realizes, well, I have to do something. I don't have any food. So he hires himself out to a pig farmer. And uh, so he's feeding the pigs. But while he's there, he's realizing, I just want to eat what these pigs have, but I have to feed them. And then he thought, well, gosh, if I go back to my father's house and tell him that I'm so sorry that I've sinned against him. At least his servants have food left over, and I will tell him that I will be one of his servants. So he gets up, and he goes, is going to the father's house. Well, before he can even get there, the father sees the son, and he runs out to him and with open arms, and he, and he, and he welcomes him. And immediately the son is saying, oh, father, I'm so sorry. I've sinned against you. You know, please just let me, you know, work for you. And the father was like, bring, you know, kill the fatted calf. My son has come home. Give him the nicest robe. Put the nice ring on him. Get sandals for his feet. And just welcomed him right right back in to, um, to his home, you know. So... This, the one aspect of the story is that there is no withhold of our good ever. 
there's no withhold of our good, that um, we are the ones who think that we're not worthy. I'm so sorry. Look at what I've done. I'm not worthy of this. And, and, and we've probably all said it somewhere in our consciousness along the way <laughs> sometime, and maybe even we still do that. Um, you know, I'm not worthy because I, I haven't been thinking right, or I did this in my past, or, you know, w w whatever. Um, this part of the story speaks very clearly to the reality that it is only in our minds that our good can ever be withheld. Do you hear that? Oh, where does that place that responsibility? Yeah, right here. It's only in our minds that we think that we are not, um, that our good could ever be withheld. Any sense of unworthiness is in our own consciousness. Any sense of it. I love that about this story. It's as soon as the father, you know, representing what I would say is, is God or love, you know, as soon as you turn back into that, it's just like everything I have is yours and, and I love you unconditionally. I mean, that's what it always is for us. There's never a withhold of God's love and God's goodness in our life. Ever, 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 ever. Do you hear that? There's never a withhold of it. There's not a punishment. There's not a, oh, you're not ready for it. No, <laughs> God just is the givingness of all that is. God just is that. And it's like, here, it's all for you. It's all for you. What? Wow. Um, we live and move and have our being in God's possibilities and potentialities. We literally live and move and have our being in this. By virtue of the fact that you exist, you deserve the good that you are seeking. By virtue of the fact that you exist, you deserve the good that you are, are, are in. And I love it because to me this parable is saying, come home to this remembering. Come home. Come home, my child, and remember who you are. And remember, again, what you live and move and have your being in. So let's say this together. I live and move and have my being in infinite possibilities and potentialities. Now, I've shared this numerous times before, but I was just really taken by this. And it was when my second husband, the day that, of the evening that he passed away. And I really believe that he was in two realms. He was both in the physical realm, but he was also having some experiences of energy and stuff. And this was all in hindsight that I realized this. But he was in, in, the, in the kitchen, and he was by the refrigerator, and he just opened up the refrigerator, and all of a sudden he just started looking around in the kitchen. And I'm like, what are you seeing? And he was like, people have no idea what is here for them. And it was just like mind-blowing to me that he was seeing something that we talk about all the time but we can't see it everything that has been seen has been made out of that which is unseen scripture clearly says that so we live and move and have our being in these this realm of infinite possibilities and potentialities you know what that means get out of your head and thinking that it has to show up or be a certain way in order for you to be happy, in order for you to, to, to be living the life of your dreams, because I guarantee you it's probably going to show up differently than you think it's going to show up, and that's the beauty of it. Okay, so meanwhile, the rest of the parable is that meanwhile, the other son is out, he's out in the fields, man, he's working the fields, and he comes up and he sees some big party going on, and he's like, goes to the servant, and he's like, what, what's going on? And he said, well, your brother came back, and your dad was so happy that he, that he killed the fatted calf, and he's having a big banquet for him. And, oh, the son was mad, and he would not go in. And so the father came out, and he's like, you know, please. He pleaded with him to please come in. And the son said, look, all these years I've been slaving for you and never disobeyed your orders. You never gave me even a young goat that I could celebrate with my friends. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we've all said to our dads at one point, huh? Like, where's my goat? <laughs> but then there's this son of yours who goes and he squanders all the money that you gave him and, um, and you kill the fattened calf for him. And, you know, of course, the father said, you are always with me and everything that I have is yours. You know, but he was lost and now he is found. But everything that I have is already yours. You know all you had to do? Ask. You just had to ask. Ask and it will be given to you. Ask. 
So what does that mean? What is ask? In unity, we believe that asking is recognizing that our thoughts and experiences of life create a consciousness or a set of beliefs to which the energy of life all around us is responding. We believe that um, if we want a different experience with money, then we're going to have to change our consciousness about money, right? That's how we're asking. We're asking with where our faith is pointed. We're asking with our consciousness. We're asking with what do I really believe about myself? What do I believe about the nature of God? What do I believe about the nature of life? Do I believe that I live in a bountiful, abundant universe and that my good can never be withheld? Do I believe that? Because if you believe that, if you sincerely believe that, all your needs are going to be met and more if you sincerely believe that. So, and I love the scripture that says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Thinketh, we, it's the thought first. But as we know, it's the thought marrying with the heart, the feeling that creates the energy. And that is what we would call the law of attraction or the law of mind action. So we're asking all the time. Right? We are. We're asking all the time. We sing our thoughts or prayers, and we are always praying. Seek a higher consciousness. You know, so we're asking all the time. Um, John Randolph Price from the Abundance Book says, The universe does not compensate individuals based on the activity of work, rather on the activity of consciousness. And Jack Canfield said, You are a walking talking bundle of intelligent energy in the form of a human body. You are made up of cells, which are made up of atoms, which are made up of subatomic particles. What are subatomic particles? Energy. Energy follows thought. Thoughts held in mind produce after their kind. Scripture is, be ye transformed by the renewal of your mind, that you might prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. It is, it is God's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Right? It's like, are we really listening and diving into what these scriptures are saying and the promises for us in this? So to change what we are asking, we've got to change our thoughts, our old beliefs, our vision, and our consciousness. So asking for us is not, dear God, please bring more abundance into my life. Now, that works for many people. And to me, it's like, whatever gets you to that place of that faith that you know your good cannot be withheld, then that's your journey. It's just not what we teach here. We don't believe that we're going to ask a God outside of us to do something um, for us. Um, and, and what we believe is what Jesus taught us here, that he said in Matthew, and whatever you ask in prayer, believing that you've received it, you will have it, right? Say to this mountain, be, the, be removed and cast into the sea without doubting it in your heart, and you will have it. You hear these things over and over here, right? So it's really all about Again, what are we focused on? Am I believing? What am I believing that I'm receiving in my life? What is what I'm believing that I'm worthy of receiving in my life? Whatever it is. So I'm going to share with you that for me, you know, say to this mountain, be removed and cast into the sea. The mountain for me was um, this old belief system that there was never enough. There was never going to be enough no matter how hard you worked. I grew up with that belief. And so I recognized that, that that was one of my mountains. You know how like beliefs become such a solid thing that it's hard to get past them? Well, this is the thing, you know, when you have enough faith, you can say to this mountain, be removed and cast into the sea and it will be gone for you. But you've got you've got to command it. You've got to do the work. So, I'm going to um tell you um, an experience that I had recently, and I really thought about, thought about, prayed about, but I feel guided to do this, um, because this is exactly what happened. It pertains to what I'm talking about today, and I absolutely love that a shift in my consciousness is caused me to take an action that I otherwise would not have taken at that time. Um, so I just, it's just such a cool story. So I took the infinite possibilities workshop with Freeman at the beginning of the year. Infinite possibilities are the Mike is authored by Mike Dooley. A number of us took, how many of us took the infinite possibility? Yeah. Okay. A lot of us took it. It was a three week class. And through this three week class, I dove into some of my old beliefs and what came up for me was my beliefs about money. 
And I recognized that I still was carrying this consciousness that there was not going to be enough. And I had numerous conversations with Paul about that during that time. And But through that workshop, we were encouraged to look at our beliefs and then to shift into, well, what, what do I want? And, and so I really began just diving in, diving in, and and shifting and catching myself and shifting and catching myself. And that's the key, my friends, is that we have to catch ourselves when we're in that stinking thinking. And then shift, catch and shift, catch and shift. So I kept doing that over and over. It was just like it became something just like I really want to change this belief that there's never going to be enough. So um, a few weeks um, at, later, Paul and I went on vacation in Dauphin Island, and I had this, you know, two weeks of just finally hitting this place of total relaxation. In this time, I was in meditation, and, um, and in meditation, I was inspired to take an action, and I took that action the very next morning, and that action brought about an unexpected blessing that I had no idea was even there for me. And that's why I'm sharing about this today. So I'm going to be 67 this year. I know I said I was 37. Just kidding. I know you guys believed me, but, and, and so, you know, with social security, I'm looking at when do I want to start pooling my retirement benefits? Um, and just give you a little education on Social Security, you can start pooling your benefits at the age of 62. Um, but if you wait until your full retire, whatever your full retirement age is, it's different for everyone, my full retirement age is 66 and a half, um, then it, during 62 and your full retirement age, you can only make up to like almost $18,000 without kind of getting a penalty on your Social Security. You're going to pay about a dollar back for every two that you get. So, um, so anyway, um, I, I knew that I was going to get what's called survivor benefits because of my second husband passing away. But I had no idea how much they would be. And, um, and so here's Social Security, too. If you pull your benefits at 62, you're going to get the lowest monthly amount. If you wait until you're 70, you're going to get your highest monthly amount. And so I'm looking and just asking myself, when do I want to start pulling? Because if I wait till I'm 70, that's my highest amount that I'm going to get, okay? So, um, and I decided I was going to wait until I was 68 to even check into it because I wasn't in any hurry. That's what I was going to do. So um, I had... But I had shifted my consciousness in that workshop. And so I have this hit in meditation to call Social Security the next morning. This was Friday, March 1st. And I got up that morning, and I called Social Security. And I was shocked by what I was being told. And that was that I, it, with survivor benefits, it doesn't go up. You get the full amount now. And so, and, and the full amount is higher than I would get on my own at 70. And so I'm like, what? Because <laughs> I'm like, what? And, and I can start pulling now. And so I'm so excited. Paul was taking a nap, and, uh, and I couldn't wait. You know, I was so was excited to tell him, but at the same time, I was real hesitant. Like, does this person really know what they're talking about? Um, okay, so process goes on, and not only, <laughs> not only will I get this amount that I can start pulling now, but I could have started pulling it at 66 and two months as a survivor benefit, and they retroactive it, at retroactived it, that's not the right way to say it, for seven months. And so this past week, I open up my checking account, and there's a significant amount of money in my checking account <laughs> that I'm like, yes, yes. <laughs> but here's the thing about all of this. Here, this is why I'm sharing it. Had I not had that shift in consciousness, I may have gotten the hit to call Social Security, but my limited human mind would have said, I'm waiting until I'm 68 because I know, because I know. <laughs> it's going to go up the longer I wait. Well, guess what? The universe said, no, you didn't know. <laughs> and this money was just there, and I didn't even know it was. That's my point. 
You never know where your good is going to come from. You don't know how your good is going to come. I never in my wildest imaginings would have thought, first of all, I was going to get the monthly amount that I'm going to get. Second, that I would get seven months worth of that in one fell swoop. But because I listened and I took action on it, and had I waited until I was 68 to even check into it, I would have lost about five months worth of income that, that, that was just mine. It was just waiting there for me. My point <laughs> is to say, get out of the how. Get out of thinking that your, your good can only come through your job or Social Security or through whatever. Your good can come through ways that you have not even begun to imagine yet. All you have to do is you have to get yourself in alignment. And that first step is God is my source. Holy Spirit is my source universe is my source, whatever you don't say, God is my source. I am worthy, and I, my good can never be withheld from me. So let's close today, and I do want to say, and I'm excited, and I think Simone's going to talk about it today, that uh, Amy Burnett, our board president, is going to be presenting the Prosperity Plus program. It's a seven-week, I think, um, journey on Sunday afternoons, and I want to encourage you to take that class and dive in. If you want a different experience with money, dive in and do the work that, uh, that is being offered here. So let's say together, God is my source, and I am worthy. Now, I want to tell you, this affirmation I started using years and years and years ago, and I love this affirmation because I'm open to the abundance of the universe, and I expect it. So I'm expecting my good's going to come to me. I don't know how. And I accept it. So I'm, I'm acting as if I'm feeling that good coming to me in expected and unexpected ways. Okay, so let's say that together. I am open to the abundance of the universe. And I expect and accept all of my good in expected and unexpected ways. And I know for each and every one of us, we're, oh, thank you, God, yes. I know for every single one, that's a really important part of that, <laughs> that we're going to have some really wonderful expected and unexpected blessings. Please share those with us as um, time goes on. And just have a beautiful week creating and, and being open to your abundance flowing in your life. And I say namaste, namaste. <laughs> Yay! So next week, we're going to be talking our third week about um, gratitude and generosity and how important that is in our, in our journey of uh, financial freedom. All right, so now is a time in our service where we get to be in the flow of this. Uh, we get to support something that is important to our hearts. We get to support uh, things that we're uh, growing and doing and being together. You, many, many ways that you can give. Uh, but let's uh, share in our gift blessing together. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive, and thank you, God. Good morning. Glad to see your shining faces, and to you online, I'm happy to see your shining faces. If you're here for the first time, or you haven't been coming very long, uh, Linda's back there with a the gold stole, and she has an information packet and a coffee mug for you, so please stop by and see her and she can answer questions about unity will you please check in on Facebook tell everyone you're here and you're missing them and then if you would please silence your phones these beautiful flowers were provided by Lisa and Amy who are lounging on the beach in Aruba for uh, their granddaughter, Elsie May's seventh birthday, which is amazing. Please join me in the mission statement, and the words are up on the screen. Together, our mission is to encourage and inspire spiritual and gro personal growth 
by empowering each other to be authentically all that you came here to be. Let's speak together the affirmation for today's daily word. I am a worthy and powerful co-creator. Unity co-founder Charles Fillmore wrote, do not hesitate to think that prosperity is for you. Do not feel unworthy. No one is ever hopeless until he is resigned to his imagined fate. I choose to not resign myself to a life of lack or limitation. Whenever I see the appearance of lack, I keep my thoughts on the source of all abundance. I claim prosperity by affirming that, with God as my source, I am a worthy and powerful co-creator. I feel prosperous and I am joyful, trusting God's power in me. I work with a spiritual law of increase. When I think and feel prosperous, prosperity manifests in my life. I appreciate the abundance all around me and I claim prosperity right here and now. The scripture for today is Matthew 13, 12. Please join me. For those who have more will be given and they will have an abundance. Let's repeat the affirmation together. I am a worthy and powerful co-creator. As Sue rings the prayer bowl, please hold the following people in your prayerful thoughts. Larry, John and Amy, Beth, Steve, Susan, Brenda, Jeremiah, Pat, and anyone else who comes to your mind. We surround John and Alice Merrifield in Georgia with peace and comfort on the passing of John's brother, Tim. Let us sing our thoughts or prayers. Thoughts or prayers, and we are always praying. Our thoughts are prayers. Listen to what you're saying. Seek a higher consciousness, a state of peacefulness. And know that God is always there. Let us absorb the vibrations and hear the tones coming from the prayer bowl. These tones are attuned to our heart chakra. Picturing, picture your heart open wide, sending out love, love from the Christ presence within you. Take in a deep breath. Hold and exhale. As we prepare for prayer and meditation, let us begin to relax. Focus your attention on the crown of your head. Relaxing as you follow down to your forehead, your eyes and ears, your lips and tongue and jaw. To release tension in your neck or shoulders, roll your neck and shoulders. Ease that tension. 
follow your relaxation as it flows down your arms, past your elbows, through your wrists, hands, and fingers. See relaxation taking place throughout your body as it moves down your spine and lower back. Relax your thighs, your knees and calves, your ankles, feet, and toes. Take another deep breath. Hold and exhale. First, we pray for all who have been impacted by recent and ongoing storms. May they know wherever they are, God is. May they feel hope in place of hopelessness. We express positive energy to welcome calm, peaceful spring. Watch your energy be multiplied by 10, by hundreds, by thousands, infinitely. Inhale deeply, hold, and exhale. We pray for the highest and best. For each of you present in our sanctuary and to those who are watching online and all that have been placed on the prayer list. For all, we affirm healing of mind, body, and soul. Guidance to make right decision in all our affairs. Comfort and support for the unpleasant happenings we may experience. Appreciation for all experiences knowing there is a no lesson in it for our favor. Peace that surpasses all understanding. And love. Love that nurtures, protects, and assures us of our worthiness. For everyone on earth, we affirm respect with no judgments, health and wellness, safety and security. A flow of abundance in every area of all lives. Loving relationships with oneself, friends, and family. Guidance, inner peace, and spiritual connection. We send out blessings embracing our spiritual community, our city, our state, and country. All nations that the human spirit is respected. Inclusivity without judgment is assured. Attention to care for the environment is practiced by all. We visualize peace in our country and all countries and all governments, true peace on earth. We are so blessed and we share with those near and far the warm, inclusive, welcoming, loving energy we feel in this our spiritual community. God is our source. We are worthy and powerful co-creators. Practice feeling prosperous, grateful and joyful, trusting God power in us. We work with the spiritual law of increase when we think and feel prosperous. Prosperity automatically manifests in our lives. We appreciate the abundance all around us, and we claim prosperity right here and now. As we move into the silence, visualize abundance all around you. Picture your dreams and claim it for yourself. Whatever you ask for in prayer and believe that you have received, it will be yours in the silence. 